Hallo Leute, ich bin Katja und ihr seht Deutsch für euch. Willkommen zurück. Der Februar ist der Monat der Liebe. February is the month of love, I guess. Since we have Valentinstag, Valentine's Day in February this week, as a matter of fact, uh, it's become sort of a, you know, couples, a couples thing, right? We all know this. Das stimmt auch in Deutschland. That's also true for Germany. And because, of course, this video is going to be about that topic, I had to wear my... DFE love shirt, my little German heart, which you can find in my merch shop, just like this mug that I have standing here in the blanket I have over my chair. But if you want to show your love for Germany and for DFE, go check it out. My shop is always linked in the description. Anyway, today I want to talk about a few things related to dating in Germany, loving people in Germany. That sounds wrong. Love in Germany. Eine der wichtigsten Themen ist, sagt man im Deutschen, ich liebe dich. Oder ich hab dich lieb. Which one of these phrases is correct? Well, both are. The short version of it is, ich liebe dich is what you exclusively say to your romantic partners. And you say it when you're really serious about it. Ich hab dich lieb is a lot less serious in the romantic sense, although it can mean a lot and be felt very deeply, because this is the I love you that you say to friends and family, and potentially also to a partner, because it communicates a bit of a different kind of love. Ich habe darüber vor Jahren schon mal ein Video gemacht. I made a video about this years ago already. Wenn ihr euch das anschauen wollt, findet ihr das auf dem kleinen i, da rede ich darüber mehr. Jetzt machen wir erstmal weiter. Another big thing that people have trouble differentiating between, for a good reason, is what do you call a partner that you're not married to or engaged to? So, boyfriend, girlfriend. What do you say? Because Germans just say, mein Freund, meine Freundin, my friend. Das wäre kein Problem, this wouldn't be an issue, wenn man das nicht auch über Freunde sagen würde. Meine Freundin hat gesagt, my friend said, can therefore be very ambiguous. But because this is the case, usually people will assume that when you're using the possessive pronoun, you mean your romantic partner unless you state otherwise. So if you say meine Freundin, people are going to assume that you mean your girlfriend. To differentiate between this, we usually just use the indefinite article when we're talking about friends. Eine Freundin, ein Freund. Eine Freundin hat gesagt, or to make it more like belonging to you, you say eine Freundin von mir, a friend of mine. Eine Freundin von mir hat gesagt. This changes if there's any qualifying adjectives in there, of course. So I can, of course, say meine beste Freundin, my best friend, and that will be understood to be my non-romantic best friend. But if you just say mein Freund, meine Freundin, it's most likely that people will assume or at least wonder if you're speaking about your partner. To alleviate all this, just like in English, you can also just say mein Partner, meine Partnerin. By the way, when and if you do end up getting married, congrats. <laughs> this changes to mein Mann, meine Frau, my man, my woman. We don't bother with such frilly terms as husband and wife, my man. My woman. That's how we go in German. Meine Frau, mein Mann. Now, you might not have a Freund or a Freundin or a Frau or a Mann. You might still be looking into that. So, was sagt man zu Deutschen, wenn man auf ein Date gehen will? Früher hat man übrigens Rendezvous gesagt. Früher war Französisch noch cooler als Englisch. Das hat sich geändert. French used to be the hip language for Germans. That changed. Now it's English. So... We do actually say date. Ja, wir gehen auf ein Date. We can also say, wir treffen uns heute. We're meeting today. That could also, in the context, mean the same thing. So, if you want to ask somebody out on a date, what do you say? You can just come right out and say, willst du mit mir auf ein Date gehen? Do you want to go on a date with me? I mean, if you have the Rückgrat, the spine for that, go right ahead. If you want to be a bit more cautious, a bit more German about it, you could say, wollen wir mal was trinken gehen? Wollen wir miteinander was trinken gehen? But wollen wir mal was trinken gehen? Or wollen wir mal 
einen Kaffee trinken gehen. You want to get coffee, you want to go out for a drink sometime, you want to go get something to drink, something like that. At this point, I find it important to differentiate between dating culture in Germany and especially dating culture in the US. I am not as intimately familiar with other countries' dating cultures, but I know that a lot of people are very exposed to US or Anglo-American dating culture. So, in the US, it tends to be common to say, we're dating, I'm dating this guy, I'm dating this girl right now, right? We're going out together. Which basically means you're in that non-committal phase and that really only changes after somebody has said, I love you, right? It's a very, uh, you have to decide on whether you're exclusive, etc., etc. And of course, those talks come up in German as well. But in Germany, it's a lot more like clear cut. There isn't as much and especially not as long of a dating phase. You basically have those like first one to three meetings and then that's it. Like you are either then at the brink of deciding, okay, do you want to actually like be together, be in a relationship or not? This sounds scary to commit commitment phobes from the English, English, English speaking sphere. I'm very aware of that. I'm going to need you to take a deep breath. In my opinion, there isn't much of a difference between an early relationship stage on German terms and the dating phase in the US terms, but there are going to be certain expectations that come with both, right? So you will hear the question of sind wir jetzt zusammen coming up earlier than you might expect it if you're from like a English speaking background. But let's assume, okay, let's assume you're zusammen mit jemandem, with somebody, right? What do you call them? Well, there's a plethora of nicknames that you can call somebody in any language, right? And it's usually hard to learn about those before you actually get into a relationship with a native speaker. So I got you covered. Most, if not all of these can also be used for children, but we're going to focus on partners. Super, super common is Schatz or Mein Schatz. Treasure, my treasure. It's also what Gollum calls the ring in the, in the German translation of the Lord of the Rings. So Schatz, mein Schatz. Schatz, kommst du mal bitte? Schatz, Schatz, it's super, super common. A lot of people like to use it. There's also variations of Schatz. There's Schatzi, Schatzi, uh, Schätzchen, although Schätzchen gets used to, like demeaning in a demeaning way a lot as well, mm, Schätzchen. But when it's not used that way, you can also use it as a cute nickname, Schätzchen. Liebling. Now, Liebling is more close to the actual meaning of precious, I would say. Liebling is like, Loveling, basically, Liebling, mein Liebling. This only has a male version, but it can be applied to any gender. Mein Liebling. I would say by now it's a bit antiquated, but you know, you, it's it's your lovely nickname. You can use whatever you want. You can also call your partner Süße or Süße, sweetie, sweetie. I personally don't really like those, but I know people who use them. Spatz is another one. Uh, translates to sparrow, but spatz, usually used more for children, but you can also, I guess, call your partner spatz. Maus, mouse, or the diminutive form, mäuschen, maus, mausi, mäuschen. Liebste and liebster, mein liebster, meine liebste. This one you will not say to children. <laughs> schnucki, schnucki, this is not translatable. Schnucki or schnuffi. Schnuffi is from schnuffeln, which is, it's what like rabbits do, schnuffeln. Schnuffi, schnuffi and schnucki. Schnuckel, schnuckel. That's the longer version of schnucki, schnuckel. Again, can't really translate it, schnuckel. But at the end of the day, you know, just like in basically any language, you might as well just come up with like a random combination of sounds that you'd like to call your partner because it makes you feel good. And that is it for today's episode. If you want to celebrate Valentine's Day with me, then go grab some merch. If you want to get some hearts for you or some loved ones. Anyway. Besides that, thank you very much to everyone supporting the FA on Patreon. Those are the people scrolling by right now. They make a small contribution for each video to make sure that I don't have to go do another job to feed myself. All of them get rewards, such as basically any like additional material, as well as my grammar scripts, that's the big deal, and <laughs> some other stuff, such as ad-free videos as well. That goes to the special people at the end of this list who are pledging $10 or up. You're awesome. Thank you very much for your support. 
And yeah, that's it. Your random word of the week is die Praline. I don't have one of them here. And I'm gonna admit it's not a random word. It's a very Valentine's Day word. Die Praline. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss. Thank you.